Hi, everyone. Mark DeJesus here, bringing you insights for your healing and freedom journey, especially when it comes to mental, emotional, and relationship health. Today, I want to get into the subject of maintaining compassion on yourself, especially when it comes to past mental health struggles and who you were in the past and what that was like and having perspective on it now. Now, I did a video on ruminating about your past that I would encourage you to check out, dive into that. I believe this is a good part B that can help us go to another level, but it actually comes out of a question that was sent in recently that I think is good to address, and I'm going to get into a breakdown of it. My question is that in learning to accept and have compassion on yourself— and who you were in your mental illness. How do you maintain that? And how do you also have compassion on the fact that others may not have the same compassion on your past? How do you handle when people justifiably react to you out of the person you were before, not the healthy person you're becoming? This is a great question because as believers, we actually need to learn to have a perspective on ourselves and others on who we're becoming and the identity that we're living out of in Christ and the journey that we're on. And we all can have a tendency to get locked in on people's history for a lot of reasons. And what what I want to do today is I want to get into what does the practice look like and how can we begin to have some healthier perspectives and relating to our past self and and our process and journey, even when other people are not having that same perspective. If the videos that I produce and put together are a blessing to your life, please be sure to like and subscribe, share it, go to markdehesus.com, and you'll be able to get on our email newsletter, and you can also download a free book today on experiencing God's love as your father. So look forward to being a blessing to you in that area. All right, so let's get into this question here. When it comes to maintaining a compassionate view on your history, it's like the former you. I want you to, again, go back to the ruminating video because that will help set a foundation what we're, what we're getting into here today. The answer is really practice. I have to learn to practice on a regular basis how I see myself because the tendency in our lives is to go back to the familiar Even though it was toxic, even though it was anti-love, we want to go back to it because it's what we knew. It's very, very familiar. That harsh, judgmental inner critic that doesn't allow us to see our situation the way that God sees it so that we can now gain some traction in knowing the next steps it will take. The truth, uh, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Truth sets us free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So we want to break free from the chains that bind us, things we did in our past, and who we identified ourselves as in the past. We want to break into freedom and who God says that we are, right? But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to learn how to continually tune the frequency of the old condemnation voice, that guilt, that toxic guilt, that shame, that harsh, judgmental inner critic. So it takes practice. And what you need to do is you need to realize that this is a muscle that needs to be developed. Imagine just going to the gym and working out a muscle. In one day, you're not going to see massive change, but you're getting used to that muscle being stretched and flexed. What's the muscle? The muscle is a new perspective. And out of that perspective of our loving father, Learning that our dad, our father in heaven, loves us, out of that father love, we get a sense of who we are as sons and daughters. Now we take the journey of grace, learning to practice. You and I are practicing who we are. A lot of Christianity emphasizes, know who you are. I know who I am. And we, we shout it out, right? And we have pep rallies. Yeah, know who you are in Christ. It's great, right? But identity in Christ is learned through experiencing the Father's love and practicing what God says about you. Practicing meaning how I think, how I react to myself and my journey. A big part, too, is also reacting to the past. I've realized that I looked at past Mark with a very harsh lens. Now, once the harsh judgmental lens comes in, I look at past Mark through an intense lens Almost like someone who's yelling at a little kid for everything they do wrong. And so what we need to see is the younger 
immature version, it's not making excuses for where we hurt people, wronged people, and any of that. It's being sober. It's, it's seeing in perspective where we are, because here's what happens. When we do that to ourselves, we are much more gracious about other people's past. You see, we're often mean to others. I know we're talking about you, the person that asked this question, and those of you watching, listening. But let's talk about others, right? <laughs> Other people that are very judgmental and harsh, they have a standard within themselves that's very judgmental and harsh. But when grace enters and you experience, it changes the picture. It's like the man in Matthew 18 who was forgiven of his debt. What made uh, the story very, very... Um, toxic was that in the forgiveness that he received, he went out and went right to judgment, right right to revenge mode. He didn't give out the love and the grace that he and the forgiveness that he received. So it's it's a game changer when we start to really connect to how God sees us and his mercy and grace in our journey. But the tendency is going back to the familiar. So we're developing a new muscle of how we see ourselves, and then giving ourselves room to practice. I'm practicing. I'm on my journey, right? So those two elements, seeing ourselves through loving compassion, practicing, what does it look like? Seeing those past moments with that compassion and grace, and two, realizing I'm on my journey and giving myself room to practice in the journey. Now, where the rubber meets the road is actually where your question is is asking, because really where the practice comes into play is I got to practice this around other people. Because when I get around other people, I bump up against their perceptions of me. And many of us can run into this where people hold you to the old you. I remember in my pastoring, there'd be people in the church who were like, oh, Mark, I remember you when you were a baby and I used to change your diapers or I don't know, I'd babysit you. And some of, some of the people I'd remember, some of them are like, I have no idea who you are, but for some reason they remembered me. I've noticed over time though, A lot of people have this issue that people who have that kind of connection, they will have a hard time receiving because they're like, oh, I know, I knew you when you were a kid. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus was performing miracles and preaching, there was a point in time where they were like, hey, isn't this the carpenter's kid? Right? They're seeing something divine and powerful. And what are they doing? They hold to an identity because people have a tendency to want to compartmentalize us in our identity. They want to put you in a box. They want to figure you out quick, put you in a box so that then you're categorized. And what it does is it doesn't allow us to live in new, in grace, and give God room, power. We as believers need to give God room that we, that we can change, that we can be transformed. We have a tendency to hold, our, hold each other, including ourselves, to the sins and mistakes of the past, right? So practicing around others who don't practice compassion. Now, Paul has this interesting little statement he says in 2 Corinthians 5.16. He says, regard no one according to the flesh or know no one according to the flesh. Now, we can look at that in context because later he's talking about, in the passage, he's talking about the new creation in Christ Jesus, right? Now, this word flesh gets confusing. There's so many different meanings. I think there's like 15 different meanings of the word flesh. My my goal is not to get deep into the weeds of that, uh, even though it can be a rich study. In this perspective, when Paul's saying, don't regard people according to the flesh, I think there's two aspects that can help us here in, in this narrative. Number one is, I think, don't hold people to just the exterior of what you see. We're often quick to judge. And people that have wisdom, they're quick to listen, slow to speak. And that helps with judgmentalism because you go, wait. My instinctive response is this, I'm going to wait on that. And I'm going to let grace and mercy come in to help me see this person from a compassionate perspective. That's what we're called to do. But sometimes we're quick to judge on just the exterior. The exterior of what we physically see You know, the Bible says man looks on the outward appearance, the Lord looks on the heart. We can also look at certain details that we can see. Oh, I see this thing about his marriage, and and we quick go to the exterior, what we see, and we don't give room for, hmm, what might be going on there to allow wisdom. The second one is important, because when we talk about the flesh, uh, if I was to give a quick summary to the flesh, it's the old, unrenewed you, Right? 
And there's many layers to what that means, uh, the working of sin, the working of living a life that has a, a, a disconnection to God's working, like in our a man's own strength, very man-centered, all of that, right? But let's keep it simple. The old unrenewed you. And if we were to look back, right, we on our history, we would see crumbs of the old you in operation, right? And Paul, in many ways, is bringing out, be careful about how you regard people because there's a newness happening. You could blink, and Mark de Jesus is already changed because layer by layer, I'm being transformed, as I'm coming into the glory of who Christ is in me, in my identity, letting that love have a work, letting the circumstances of my life change me, right? But then as soon as I look back in a condemning lens, whoo, I get pulled back to that. I get depressed. I get defeated. And people can be big magnets to hold you to that. I believe Paul experienced that himself. He was a murderer, of Christians, and now he's actually going to their homes and preaching. You don't think he had to work on some guilt issues of the past and uh, some of the decisions that he made? Imagine him walking up to the door, knocking on the door, and somebody there saying, hey, you're the guy that murdered my son. Imagine just the whole journey of that. And, 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 And people not being able, wait a second, you're an apostle? And you see that in his writings where he's having to you know, work through that in his identity and his calling. You'll see this in church. Many of you, if you go back to an old church, as soon as you walk in the door, they're holding you to a whole system and pattern. Now, there's things that we've done where we need to make some amends in a healthy way. Uh, All of that, that takes wisdom. That's a whole different subject in itself, right? But many people who are writing this kind of question, they've tried to make amends or they've done those steps. They've asked God for forgiveness. They're walking a renewed life. But the shame of the past is following them. And many times people in church can hold us to the old. I've seen that where people will hold me to my younger self growing up in church. People will hold me to my younger youth pastoring. Oh, I knew him when he was, uh, he's a young guy, right? Right? And and that can then impact me and how I see myself, right? The big one is family. This is where in family, in biological family, there is a disruption because you've entered into a new family with a new father and a new identity, and biological family can act as a suction cup to pull you back to the old you, and they hold you to the old you. I've seen this continually where people have a struggle because they've received Christ stepping into the new, but the family's holding them to the old and it's keeping them stuck in this tension because they're trying to keep them happy and, but yet they're not being willing to step. Well, I shouldn't say not willing. They're not knowing how to step into the new, not knowing how to step into the new because they're being held to the old. So what do we do about this? Now, when we get into what we should do, I'll tell you first what we often do. I've done this. You've done this. We've all done this, is we convince. We want to convince people. No, you don't understand. This is who I am. This is the new me, right? We want to convince them of the new story of what we've done or what happened. I find that over and over again in my life, I would want to rehash uh, the true story. Here's what really happened, and I need to tell you, and I found myself wanting to repeat over and over again, oh, I'm changed, I'm getting better, these are things are happening, right? And they're holding me to the old, oh, Mark, remember you and you're, and I'm like wanting to tell them and wanting to convince them and we want to talk and we over talk and we say too much. How many of us do that? We're trying to fix it, make the story better and it's a control mechanism and we're, we're, we're trying to get people on board with us and it's understandable. And if you've done this many times, I'm with you, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and all of that of trying to convince people of what what the new is and what was happening in my life. And so if you want to experience greater mental and emotional health in this area, it's going to be the power of acceptance. And this has been a journey for me, but it's been so powerful as I've allowed it to happen. Number one, accept that people will, they can and will misunderstand you and hold you to the old you. They're going to do that. They're going to misunderstand your motives. They're going, to mis- they're going to misrepresent you. They're going to judge you harshly at times. Got to do it. They're going to do it. 
You have to accept that. Because otherwise, you're going to try to convince, you're going to argue, you're going to debate. You're going to strive in trying to get people into a different narrative. You're going to exhaust yourself and wear yourself out. This is the ground we have to practice going there. Okay, if that's what they think, then that's what it's going to be. Now what? I'm going to keep stepping forward. Because otherwise, we are held into a gaze of what they're thinking, and now we're either trying to fix it or we're trying to make it better. Now, there is amends, you know, in the, in the statement that was written, it said, how do you handle when people justifiably react to you out of the person you were before? So I get a sense even in that question, it's like, yeah, there were some, there were some wrong things I did, some harmful things I did. That's where humility is important. Because in acceptance, we accept, okay, that's where I was at that time. And I accept that people are going to probably hold me to that. That's where we are. Now, that produces humility because it's like, okay, I get it. You're holding me to that. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm not going to try to convince you or I'm walking into some new and I get it. Now, I'm going to have to keep moving forward. So number two, I have to accept that they may not be the people that can go with you where you're going. I've noticed this over and over again, that in transformation, people want to take a step forward. And one of the things that hooks them back is relationships that they can't seem to step out of. These are people, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about people who love you and, 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 and want great things, but you've got conflicts and stuff like that you're working through. I'm talking about people that are very toxic for you that you need to move on from. And I watch this over and over again in my pastoral work where people would make a decision to step forward in their walk with Christ, but all it took was relationship to kind of like pull them back into the old patterns. And, and, and that, that, that community creates a, uh, that hook in, in who we hang out with pulls us back to those old patterns. But this acceptance and humility also can lead you into accepting. These are the people that uh, I probably aren't going to be people I got to run with. And here's what I find. When you have to step away, I accept that's how you see me, but I've got to move on. There's this empty gap between leaving the old group and walking into the new group. We sometimes think, I'm going to leave the old group and magically a whole new community of wonderful people is right there in front of me. You know, there's usually a wilderness between leaving and the new. And usually that wilderness is a detox period anyway, where you're just learning to come out of the old and come into the new patterns that you need, and then new being open to new and organic relationships. So this is all about acceptance with, with a humility there. It's not you're better than anybody else, the new you. Uh, sometimes people are like, you know, these people can't go with me because they don't know who I am and, and who, and what I've become. And, you know, we kind of march around like we're better than everybody else. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's humility. It's like there's a new and I get it. I get it. You're in the old. You're holding me to the old and you saw some of the old. I get it. Forgive me. We do that work, but they're still holding us to us anyway. It's time to move forward. So was this a help for your journey? If it was, please let me know because I know it's been helpful for me because I want to see you according to the potential that God has within you, the divine work of your true identity as he sees you in Christ Jesus. So I pray that you'll be able to break off the shackles and step into the new in a whole new way. If this has been a blessing, please consider a one-time donation or you can also become a regular supporter. Go to markdehesus.com, click on the donate button. I look forward to seeing you in future resources. God bless you.